Are we live? We're live. Hey, folks. We are. We are. This device here can Al Gore's internet. So this in here. Uh, Leupold, Rocky Mountain Elk Foundation, Onyx Maps, and Black Gold. So we have a special guest. Many of our uh, Scott's from Reno. So mine just went live. The volume went up. Glad you like it. Hey, <laughs> between Scott and I today, we sound like scouting. Oh, we're not scouting. We can't. What, what do we got for questions, guys? To leave genitalia a test. You do have to do that. That usually means inside, you're going to have to leave a patch. And to the meat. Patients, but what do we got, Marcus? So, Alex asked, how would you approach a bull? archery season uh I'll probably try to ambush him but if he goes now in nevada archery elk season a spot and stocking for me uh and if he goes and beds his cows then i'm gonna try to get him in so what else? Uh, how much you trust your cd oh uh, brian asked how much which uh those are from leupold is uh, I trust them on every rifle. So, trouble, or if they didn't work, really, really good. And as far as I don't know, in, in the show, we don't we try to keep our shots very reasonable, both for just we don't want a mess. Then the farther something is away, all conditions being equal, the greater the likelihood of a of maybe not the perfect shot. So. We try to keep our shots under 300 if we can. Uh, I go out to my range. I have a 400 meter uh, setup out at our range, and I can sit there all day long uh, and do just fine with it. Longer distance than that, but that's what I use it for. So, also, we're getting ready to uh, start putting together some prize packages for September, like really major league prize packages. So make sure that you're signed up to be notified and you can uh, do that by texting Randy, R-A-N-D-Y, to 313131 or if you're in Canada, 393939. And if you see some blur on the lens there, there's like a cloud of bugs right here. I don't know if they're mosquitoes or what, but probably messing up all of our stuff. So what, what do we got going next? Uh, not spray. Uh, I use uh, an anti-UV, I guess you'd call it a low UV uh, laundry detergent, but I don't use the sprays. Uh, let's see. <clears throat> Someone says that the reception is going in and out. Yeah, we're not live on bow ticker. Huh. Well, that's a bummer. wonder what the deal is. All right. Hunting New Mexico unit it doesn't say what unit number for the first time rifle october 7th early in scout because you're towards the end of the rut period and if you can pattern where cows are you're going to find where the bulls are so if you can get there two days early and get those patterns dialed in you'll be just fine all right i hope you kill a giant thanks dale i appreciate that i hope i do too how are we doing, guys? Someone says the YouTube feed is... What's that? It's in and out, it sounds like. Yeah. The I'm going to see if I can change the settings, but I can't change it during... The YouTube feed is working fine, it says. Uh, hmm. Randy, do you process your animals after the kill? I understand you have kind time constraints due to traveling. Uh, that's my favorite part. Ask anyone who hunts with us. If you're a guest hunter hunting with us, I beg you to let me do the field dressing. And when I go home, if I have time, I love doing the processing. I, it's, I don't know, it's just the part of hunting that I really, really love. And so when time allows, yeah, I do my own. Uh, let's see, how are we doing? Are we? I'm new to archery hunting. What 
kind of bow do you recommend? I'm new to archery hunting. What? This one right here, Bowtech. <laughs> no, they have all kinds of models, Bowtech, it, to to meet everybody's need. Uh, I love them. I've been shooting them now for a long, long time. I'm trying to remember when I started shooting them eight or nine years ago. And this year I'm shooting a Rain 7. They're really, I mean, as far as the combination of silent, quiet, forgiving, and speed, uh, they're just easy to shoot. You don't need to, you don't need to worry that when, you know, they, they call it a smart bow for a reason. You can get it tuned to whatever your form uh, imperfections are, and it will just shoot accurately as all can get out. So that's, that's what I use. All right. What else we got, guys? Someone said, can you map out a typical late season elk hunting day? Map out a typical late season elk hunting day. Yeah. Late season would be November and later. So usually we're up eating breakfast a couple hours before dark, jump in the truck, drive to the trailhead, got about an hour. Glass, you'll see we, we're always carrying multiple tripods. I will glass all day. If I get cold, I'll start a fire. I will sit there and I have to be there before the sun comes up because those elk, your greatest time to see them is in that first half hour, by late season, maybe even the first hour. You have to be there. And sometimes during the day, they'll get up out of their bed. So you gotta be glassing the whole day long. I know that gets frustrating. I know it gets boring. Find some way to pass the time. That's why I like to start a fire. And then, and then I'm hiking back out of there, probably a mile at least. And we go from there and get up, repeat the process the next day. It, it gets tiring and wears you down, but that's how you kill elk on public land in the late season. All right, what do we got next? Wants to know, uh, what binos those are. Oh, what binos these are? These are the new Santium uh, 15 by 56s. They're called the BX5 uh, from Leupold. Uh, if you're gonna spend all day glassing this is what you want to do. You want to have them, usually I'm sitting and they're on a tripod and you can just slowly. And some people like to. It was fine, but hard to beat, really hard to beat. Um, oh shoot. How critical is elevation for setting up a CDS dial? I live in the east and want to want to use it for deer uh, and east and big game in the out west yeah so a cds dial asks you what your normal altitude will be what you can do is you can get your your uh, system zeroed in at your home and then you can go online and you can find what effect altitude has on that load at wherever you're going to be you can't get a dial that covers every single situation like I get mine set for my home, which is 5,000 feet. Sometimes I'm up at 10,000 feet. Sometimes I'm down at 3,000 feet. I go onto the ballistics charts and calculators and I find out what does that load do if I change my elevation? I mean, you see a lot of guys have, they call them dope sheets, uh, tap to, uh, tape to the, the butt of their rifle stock uh, on the side. Uh, some people have uh, downloaded some of the ballistic calculators on their phone. Uh, you just got to know that there are differences. You can't get a dial that accounts for every one of them. So. Someone just asked how long you've been hunting. How long have I been hunting? Uh, today we got up at, uh, let's see, today we've been up for about, um, hmm. Yeah, 4.15. So we've been up for 16 hours already. Uh, how long have I been hunting in my life? Uh, since I was 12 is when I officially started hunting. I was tagging along with my dad and grandpa and uncles way before then. So that's 40 years I've been doing my own hunting. So I've been at it for a while. Have you tried Corey Jacobson's new diaphragm call? Have I tried Corey Jacobson's new diaphragm call? No, I haven't. Corey, I, I think Corey, when I talked to him yesterday, they all sold out within like three hours. So hopefully he's got another batch of them ready to go. Uh, but no, I use the same company, Rocky Mountain Hunting Calls. Uh, I use the same calls, but I use a little different one. 
Send me one, Corey. I'll try it. I, I thought we were friends, but maybe not. So. When hunting elk at the beginning of the rut, should you mostly use a cow call or a bull call? At the beginning of the rut. So that, I guess that depends on if it's pre-rut or peak rut. I used to think cow calling was the way to go. After hunting with people who are aggressive callers, I'm bugling way, way more than I'm cow calling. So regardless of what period of the rut it is, I think you're going to get a better reaction from bulls by bugling than you are cow calling. How are we doing? Um, we still got a connection here? We're, what it is, we're in Nevada, every place you go, there's either a mine or a geothermal plant. And up on this big ridge we're on, down below us, we're poaching some Wi-Fi, uh, not Wi-Fi, but uh, cell service from their tower down here at this, I don't know what it is. Down below us, there's a facility. So it's the only place we could find out here that had much coverage. Um, what age is it okay to start taking my kids hunting? Whatever age, it'll be fun for them. Make sure it's fun for them. So the question was, what age is it appropriate to start taking kids hunting? Whatever age, it'll be fun. Don't make it miserable for them. So every kid's going to be different. Some mature faster than others. Just however it is, uh, whatever age, it's fun. And don't take them out in the miserable times. Take them out when it's warm, when it's, you know, maybe on a hunt where it's, Okay, you, you know it's going to be really good because there's a lot of animals around. It's going to keep them excited. Do the times that are fun, and they'll be hunters for life. What else we got, Marcus? What websites do you recommend to do research on hunting public lands? Uh, I have two websites that I use. One, I'd go to my Hunt Talk forum. We have a big forum, hunttalk.com. It is the only website I know of specifically dedicated to public land self-guided hunting www.hunttalk.com. Uh, if you're doing research, I'd go to the gohunt.com uh, uh, webpage. Uh, that's got the best research tools out there. And uh, if you're doing map work, you guys all know I, on my phone, on my GPS, uh, Onyx Maps, those are probably the three bookmark pages that, that uh, I get the most use in my browser. So bother with a bugle in Colorado's second rifle season or just sit quietly in glass? So Colorado's second rifle season is usually the last 10 days of October somewhere in there. Would I bother bugling? No, I wouldn't. To me, that's post rut. The bulls are not going to be calling. I'm getting far away. I'm looking for where are these single bulls in their sanctuary mode. I'm going to find places other people don't want to go. And I'm going to be right here with the glass, glassing, glassing, glassing. So. so Nick says that he has located a nice group of elk in his unit in Arizona for early archery. They're on great grass, lots of cows and bulls and bachelor groups. What are the odds they will be there in September? Very good. If, uh, so Nick says he's got an Arizona archery tag. He's found a place with great grass, lots of bulls uh, in bachelor groups still, and lots of cows. If the cows are there, they are there because you have found, Nick, the best feed in, in that area, and they're going to be there all the time. So if they are there, when the rut kicks in, the bulls are going to be there. So don't tell any of your buddies about that spot. You have found a good spot. Go there and hunt it. Someone asked where you're hunting right now. I think you already said, but... No, oh, where am I hunting right now? I am hunting in Nevada. Like, if Nevada is kind of this triangle-shaped state, like, right in the middle. Uh... Austin, Nevada, that's where I'm hunting, Austin, Nevada. What tips do you have for not getting freaked out when you hike into the backcountry and camp overnight solo? What tips do I have for not be getting freaked out by going into the backcountry camping overnight solo? Um, I don't, I get that question a lot and I think a lot of people do have discomfort and I can't tell you that I know any tips because I've been camping out in the woods since I was three years old. We, we used to build forts and all kinds of stuff and we just, uh, I don't know, I go and do it I guess is the question or, or the, the answer to the question and the more you do it, the better off you'll be, the more acclimated you'll get to it. Don't, I mean, your odds of getting hurt going to the grocery store are probably higher than the odds of getting hurt or having a tragedy while you're out solo backpack hunting. 
How would you hunt bears in a fall hunt? How would I hunt bears in a fall hunt? I'd find the best food source I can, the berries. Bears are going to be on berries and they're just, they're going to be feeding all day long. So if I was in Alaska, I'd be looking for salmon. Uh, but in the lower 48, I'd be looking for berries. And that's how I'd hunt bears in the fall. Um, what is your... Would you rather be using those uh, binos or a spotter scope, spotting scope? Would I be better off using binos or a spotting scope? Well, they're specifically talking about the 15 by... Oh, these? Yeah. Uh, I have both. I carry both. You'll see today, this morning I had a big spotter and I had these. Uh, depending on if weight is a factor, if weight's a factor, um, I'm probably going to carry my 60 millimeter spotting scope. If weight isn't a factor, I'm going to carry these plus either my 60 millimeter or 80 millimeter gold ring spotting scope. Just depends on... Uh, how much because you'll see a lot more uh, animals in big binos like this but if you really want to inspect them sometimes having that 60 power of a spotting scope is really nice so what are your cold weather mitts what are my cold weather mitts a lot of you see me wearing these uh, mittens some people have said why do you wear baking mittens when you're out elk hunting they're chopper mitts. If you grew up in the upper Midwest, you know what chopper mitts are. They're a leather mitten with a, a rag wool liner. And people who grew up <clears throat> beaver trapping, ice fishing, all the things I grew up doing in northern Minnesota, you learn how to keep your hands warm in really cold conditions. And you realize that gloves are a train wreck. Do not wear gloves in cold weather. Wear mittens. I can shag that mitten by just shaking my hand like that and now I got warm fingers that are ready to go. You guys trying to pull those gloves off, your fingers are so cold when you finally get the glove off, you're not going to be able to run your rifle anyhow. So, mittens, not gloves. Do spike elk typically stay with the cows or go on their own in November hunts? Do spike elk typically stay with the cows or go on their own in a November hunt? You'll see the spike still with the cows that whole first year of their life until they become a two and a half year old bull. They're going to be mostly with the cows. Is there a time or situation when you need to sound like a bigger bull? Is there a time or situation when you need to sound like a bigger bull? Uh, You'll get a hundred opinions on that. Some people are like, oh, you got to sound like the biggest, nastiest thing. And some will say, oh, if you do that, you'll scare them off. I don't know that there's a time. I just say, well, what kind of mood does he seem to be in? If he sounds like he wants to fight, well, then I'll be more aggressive and try to sound bigger. If he sounds like he's lukewarm, uh, I'll probably be a little lukewarm. How do I keep my energy up on these long days? Uh, midday naps. <laughs> uh, and you're just tired all the time. Uh, we drove for 15 hours yesterday to get here from Montana. Uh, you get up early and we'll get in late. By the time we get off this mountain and head to our camp about, I don't know, 40 minutes north of here, uh, it wears you out. If there's one good thing about the later seasons in November, the days are shorter. So you don't have to get up as early and you get to end your hunt earlier that day. So. Are you going to shoot that mule deer standing behind you? Am I going to shoot that mule deer standing behind? Oh, they must see that. <laughs> there must be that dead snag there. They think, hey, but this morning we were standing here glassing and doing all this stuff. And I look to talk to Michael, the camera guy, and there's a mule deer buck walking right behind him about 40 yards. And I say, Scott, Scott look and scott's telling me a story about growing up in nebraska i'm like scott and he looks over there and the buck just keeps right on walking he's just a little guy though we weren't gonna shoot him but we could have shot him right from we we're making a lot of noise that guy had a death wish he wanted to be on tv so this one's not a deer back here so but 60 or 80 objective on a spider if you could only have one if i could only have one would it be a 60 millimeter or 80 millimeter objective lens that would be 60. I have both, and on backpack hunts, on long hikes, the 80 gets left in the truck, the 60 comes with me. And even, uh, say I'm antelope hunting and I'm near the truck all the time, I could still make do with my 60, so. Uh, when using the on 
Mon X map roadless feature, do you recommend hunting the purple or only the white highlighted areas? Okay, so someone is on the new Onyx map application, uh, the new hunt app, and there's a roadless layer that we worked on and helped. The, they kind of saw me doing all this with Microsoft Paint, and they said, we can, we can make that easier, Randy. And so the really white areas on that layer are f the farthest from roads. And then it, there's a gradient that the closer you get to roads, it becomes purple and then kind of a, almost a black. The person asks, do you hunt the, only the white areas or do you hunt the purple areas? I hunt all of it. I, I mean, the white areas tell me, okay, here's the likely places to find a sanctuary in the late season or the post-rut season. There are also the places during the early season, the pre-rut and the peak rut, where I'm probably going to encounter less hunters. So I'm gonna even go hunt those kind of places even when bulls aren't in sanctuary mode. Uh, Ryan asks, how far do mule deer typically move from bed to bed? Ryan asks, how far do mule deer typically move from bed to bed? I don't know, but the ones today, they were out in a, a little alfalfa field, which is weird to see an alfalfa field out in the middle of the desert. And I would bet they're going up and bedding any, sometimes anywhere from two to three miles, and they might return and do that same thing. If they're comfortable, they might only come up a mile. But I've seen mule deer at this time of year very comfortably go two to three miles to feed or to water they're usually mostly doing it to water in the desert areas that i hunt you might want to warn them that this thing's probably going to die all right folks this thing might die because we're running out of battery we're running out of signal if it does thanks for watching we're going to keep answering questions until that thing just goes completely kaput also we are starting to on the Bowtech website we're going to start promoting our elk system videos uh, I think next Tuesday you're going to see the early season video and we're going to follow those but go to the, the Bowtech uh, website and you're going to find where those videos are. So let's keep doing it until we run out of juice guys. Um, have you ever been in a situation where you had to pack out a bull by yourself? Have I ever been in a situation where I had to pack out a bull by myself? Yes I have. It's not any fun. You find out who your real friends are. Hey uh, I got a bull down. Uh, what are you doing tomorrow? Oh I'm busy. <laughs> I've done it. It's not that much fun, but it's easy. I'm not easy. It can be done by one person. It just takes multiple trips. What's the biggest Nevada muley that you've harvested? What's the biggest Nevada muley I've ever taken? It was last November. In fact, you'll be able to see it on TV here again. It'll repeat sometime, I think, in October. Uh, that might be the biggest Nevada one. Uh, archery, uh, the biggest one I shot was over by Carlin, Nevada. Uh, yeah, that was on your own adventure season three. Uh, Scott Jones helped me shoot a really big one with my muzzle loader back before we were ever doing the TV show. I shot that one over by Great Basin National Park. Um, but the one I shot last year over in eastern uh, Nevada was just ugly, massive, cranky looking. He was fun. So. Game on your hunts? Do I eat a lot of wild game on our hunts? We have one cooler that is loaded with whitetail burger, antelope burger, and whitetail pepper sticks. And I don't know what Scott Jones has in his freezer, but every time you go hunting with Scott, he's got a camp set up. You, you've probably got something there. He's being bashful. He's not telling us. He, it's the surprise stew is what Scott calls it. What Sitka gear am I wearing? This is their new subalpine pattern. This is the Ascent series. It's lightweight, uh, dries really quickly. It's made for hunting in hot weather. Uh, when hunting burns, do you recommend a small burn area or a large burn area? When hunting burns, do you recommend a small burn area or a large burn area? Yes. <laughs> uh, actually, if all things are equal, I'd prefer smaller burns. And when I say smaller burns, two to 300 acres versus the huge, huge burns. But a lot of times the best burns or the most recent burns and the most productive burns might be 20,000 acres. So I'm gonna let the, the critters tell me which burn is better. What are your favorite backcountry meals to pack? What are my favorite backcountry meals to pack? Ugh, none of them. <laughs> because if we're going backcountry, we're going lightweight with jet boils and I shouldn't say that. Mountain House, uh, I'm a teriyaki chicken guy when it comes to Mountain House. That's my favorite one. Uh, chicken and dumplings isn't bad either. But the rest of them, I, I struggle with Mountain House because I got a bum liver. I can't process a lot of stuff. And 
all the sodiums that are required, and not just in Mountain House, but all the backcountry foods. Uh, it's hard for me to live off that for more than about three or four days. Did you get a tag in Arizona this year? Did I get a tag in Arizona? I have a deer tag in Arizona, and I have an elk tag in Arizona. I know you people are like, Newberg, how is it that you draw all these Arizona tags? Well, I apply for the tags nobody else wants. And we go there and we find plenty of critters. So I don't know if, if I, I get it. Some people are like, well, if I'm going to go to Arizona, I want one of the glory tags. Uh, cool. I'll be down there hunting elk in October and deer in November. So. This one's pretty specific. They do oh. an Idaho 42 uh, mule deer. Tag. Idaho Unit 42 mule deer straight north of us here. Where Will the bucks be on November 1st? Where will the bucks be on November 1st? They're going to be staging close to the does. It's not full rut yet. So I would go find the places where the does are feeding because the does are usually, the does have moved to the winter range where the best feed is and the bucks are staging within a mile of there. And keep hunting, keep hanging around. I hope you have good luck. I know it was a hard winter down there uh, last year. So hopefully there's still some good bucks around. much like elk or do they tend to stay in a home range or general area do mountain mule deer move much like elk or do they tend to stay in a home range and have a general area they don't move as much as elk they kind of have their basins you know if this uh, you can't really see it back behind the camera there's like three basins right behind us and and the same group of mule deer would hang in those three basins they're it's not like they're going to be there one day and they're going to be 10 miles away the next day and they might be six miles over here the next day uh, they're they're far more of a home buddy than an elk is so how's um, the public land fight going how's the public land fight going oh man too bad you had to ask uh there's a lot going on uh i'll be in montana doing a public land symposium i fly from elko to montana uh, there's a panel there about public land outdoor recreation and then I'm going to be doing a public land appearance uh, down in Albuquerque I think August 28th I think it is so yeah there's plenty going on with public land right here we're standing on public land Nevada is 84 percent public land BLM just like this get your bow get your rifle and go hunt so that's why I love it that's why I fight for it do you have any non deer or elk tags such as goat ram or moose do i have any non-deer or elk tags this year yeah i have a montana pronghorn tag uh my son has a moose tag not me um i'm gonna have a javelina tag in arizona I, the draws are 100 percent there uh what else deer? what's that deer? well yeah they said non-elk or deer uh so it's that's kind of what i have but we'll be just over there, we're going to be back in Nevada in November filming a friend's desert bighorn sheep tag about, oh, 80 miles from here. Not my tag, but, so. What, Go ahead, Scott. What's your favorite state for big mule deer bucks? What's my favorite state for big mule deer bucks? Mmm, that'd be a toss-up between where I'm standing right now in Nevada or Colorado. Uh, and that's just because that's where I've hunted them the most. I... I know that Idaho has some tremendous public land over-the-counter mule deer hunting. And I know all you Idaho guys are saying, shut up, Newberg. Uh, Utah, if you can draw the tag, has some tremendous. Uh, Arizona, if you draw the tag. So um, I'm just partial to the places where I've been able to get tags. So Wyoming, I'm still sitting on maximum points there. So next year, I plan on burning my points in Wyoming. What 10 power binos do you recommend? What 10 power bino zoo I recommend? I have uh, Leupold's Mojave BX3s, uh, HDs. Uh, that's what I use. Have you ever hunt hunted in northern Nevada? Have I ever hunted in northern Nevada? Oh yeah, I went to college in Reno. I, I've stomped, I mean, between chucker, coyotes. Uh, I drew a pronghorn tag in, uh, on the Sheldon. Uh, I've hunted deer in many places in northern Nevada. I've hunted up around north of Elko. Uh, yeah, northern Nevada is a cool place. Uh, Are we out of power yet, Michael? This thing's trucking. Uh, my, Michael's here. got, you should, if we could show Michael, he's got our, we've got our broadcaster device here. He's holding it up above the sagebrush like this. His arms have got to be getting sore. He's been doing it for a half hour now. <clears throat> but.
The folks at Botech, really thank you, as the same at Leopold and Onyx Maps and let's see, Ripcord, Tight Spot, Black Gold. Next week or the week after, I think there's a couple more companies that want to be part of doing this. So we really appreciate all you watching. I, I think what we're going to do next week, we're going to dial down the feed quality slightly because then it won't drop the audio and stuff. But a lot of you are still hanging with us. Thanks for, for hanging in there. What do we got, Marcus? Well, I said we were going to go until we run on. I mean, we already messed up the evening hunt. Just so we could come and do Elk Talk Live, we have a group of bucks down here, and we're like, well, should we go shoot them tonight? No, we can't. We got to do Elk Talk Live. People are waiting on us. So we took one for the team tonight. So we're going to hang in here till the bitter end. Uh, someone asked you about if you have a, could show a video of field dressing an elk, but with deboning it. Oh, someone asked if I can do a video about field dressing an elk and deboning it. Uh, I guess we can sometime if ever we debone one. Well, there's the gutless method. Right. We, on, our, on our YouTube channel, we have the gutless method, but that's, we didn't debone that one. That was just quartering. Uh, but deboning is really easy. I mean, you know where the big bones are. You're just uh, like cutting the meat off the bone and just like you do at home putting it in bags it's not that hard so. um, in a five-day elk hunt in mid to late September archery do you hit the mountain hard or spend the first afternoon and evening glassing in hopes of locating elk for the next morning mid September or late sep mid September five-day public land archery elk hunt in the rut am I going to spend the day glassing or am I just gonna hit the mountain I'm probably, that time of year, I'm hitting the mountain. I'm going to be up way before daylight. I'm going to be calling in the dark, waiting to see if I can get a bugle to respond to me. I'm going to be marking them on my GPS. And when it's time, I'm going to get as close to those bugles as I can. I'm in archery elk season. I'm not spending a lot of time glassing. Weston Coons wants a shout out for his name. Weston Toons? Coons. How do you spell it? K U N. K-U-N-Z, Weston Coons wants a shout out for his name. Hey, Weston, you just got a shout out, man. Support these companies that make this possible. In light of that, what tripod are you using? What tripod am I using? You can see Leupold makes tripods. This is a carbon fiber one uh, that makes it lightweight. Uh, they make a shorter one that if I'm really worried about weight, uh, I'll cut down even more by using the smaller one. How long will you age meat? How long will I age meat? I usually don't age meat. The reason being is if you're going to age meat, you better have a very controlled environment in which you're aging meat. If you let it freeze, it's not going to age. If you don't control that temperature really closely, it's not going to, it's going to age all right. It's going to age and get a little bit funky smelling. So uh, I don't, I don't do it. I know some people do, and for those who have the controlled settings where they can do it, they're going to end up with better meat than I end up. When is the antelope rut? When is the antelope rut? Uh, pretty much September. Uh, I'd say September 10th. It pretty much mirrors the elk rut for the most part. Uh, September 10th through about October 15th. So, What's so funny? Marcus is over there laughing. He's got a cell phone in each hand. He's like two-fisting it here. Oh, he got a question from his wife. Uh-oh. <laughs> we don't want to answer that on Elk Talk. I don't have any from my wife. My wife must not care. She knows I'm in good hands with Scott Jones. My wife says, as long as you go somewhere and Scott Jones is there, I sleep well. What's your favorite thing to do besides hunting? What's my favorite thing to do besides hunting? Boy, that's a good question. I'd say fish walleyes with my wife would be at the top of it. Uh, I'm a Minnesota Vikings football fan, which I don't know if you'd say that's a favorite thing to do. That's a painful thing to do. Um, that's probably it. Disinherit the federal treasury so I can afford to keep hunting. Uh, and I say that I'm a CPA a tax guy. That's, that's how I afford uh, all my bad habits in life. So. <clears throat> Trek boots would you recommend resoling or buying new ah whichever works for you uh, I've got some that have been resold twice uh, oh the question was uh, Kenetrek boots would you buy new or would you resole I'm sure the folks at Kenetrek are gonna say Randy tell them to buy new boots uh, and if you buy new boots 
can they see these gators? These are called hiking gators, and then they have a full-length hunting gator. When you're in Nevada, there are burrs everywhere. And I'm wearing their, right here, these are their uh, Bridger uh, hikers. They're, they're uh, a real lightweight chew. So they only go this high right here. And so I'm wearing a, a, a short gator to keep all the burrs out. But I don't know, I, I've got some I've had resold, and there's some times I just say, you know what? I'm not gonna resold them a third time, I'm just getting new ones. You're, if you can file your in, income tax. <laughs> <laughs> Marcus said someone wants me to do their tax return for them. My wife is looking for a good accountant, so you probably don't want me as your accountant. <laughs> Can I do it? Yeah. Do you want me to? No. Is it expensive? Yeah, really expensive. So. <clears throat> what kind of tires would you recommend for hunting Arizona? What kind of tires would I recommend for hunting Arizona? The best tires you possibly can. You want 10 ply tires if you are hunting the lava rocks of Arizona or New Mexico or this terrible rock here in, in Nevada or Utah. 10 ply tires. I run the Cooper 8, I think they're called AT3. Uh, they're soft enough that on the highway you don't get this really bad hum noise, uh, but they'll hold up really, really good in, in these places I go. So. Always have two spares when you come to these places. Even the best tires, there's a good chance you're going to cut a rock or cut a sidewall on a rock. What is so funny, Marcus? Someone asked when you're going to release your tax returns. When am I going to release my tax return? <laughs> Someone wants to know when I'm going to release my tax return. When I run for president, I'll release my tax return, I promise you. And people will say, if that's all that's on that tax return, how did he afford to hunt so much? <laughs> Robert Lux was his name? Yeah, was hey Robert, uh, you know, I I got a lot to hide, you know, so I, I'm not sure about my tax return, but if the folks at Botech or Leupold or Onyx or any of those companies say, hey Randy, you got to release your tax returns, I guess I'll release my tax return. <laughs> what, what, what's a normal camp look like? For you and your crew. What's a normal camp look like for me and the crew? It, the camp we have right now is not our normal camp because Scott drags his travel trailer out, his one ton truck, and he brings everything. So our normal camp is really sparse. You would think that, I bet you if you went to some homeless shelter where they're living in cardboard boxes under the bridges, some of those people that have a more luxurious camp than what we live out of. Uh, but so many people ask that. This season, we're going to start doing uh, videos on here's what our camp looks like. Just, okay, this is what we sleep in, this is how we eat, up, 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 up. Then, because a lot of people have questions about it. And I guess I've been doing this for so long, I've been spending 80 to 100 days a year in a camp. I've just sorted out what works and doesn't work. So I take it for granted that everyone else knows that, and maybe that's why they're interested in it. Are we out of battery yet, Michael? I don't, I don't think this thing's going to die. It's not going to die. All right. <laughs> like a half hour ago, you said, hey, we're just about out of battery. You better warn them. So. It was really like a half hour ago. When are you going to do a Minnesota hunt? When am I going to do a Minnesota hunt? Uh, people know I grew up in Minnesota. I got a ton of friends back there, uh, family back there, going back there next month for my mom's 70th birthday. Happy birthday, mom. Love you. Uh, but I won't be hunting then. Uh, I don't know. I think next year we're going to go back there and we're going to do a grouse episode or possibly a whitetail episode. But if I do a grouse episode, you need to understand that for me, grouse is high quality food and I don't let them get away. I shoot them on the ground. I shoot them on stumps. I shoot them in the trees. I shoot them wherever. I don't flush them to shoot them. And when I shoot a grouse, you would swear I just shot a boot and crock at bull elk. So I'm not sure if we go back there, if it'll be a, a grouse hunt or a deer hunt. A favorite way to prep and cook pronghorn? A favorite way to prep and cook pronghorn. Yeah. Uh, my wife has a secret marinade. Uh, it's not that secret. You can actually buy it on Amazon, I think. No. <laughs> she tweaks it a little bit. And I marinate it and I slow cook it on the grill. I grill it, but at a very low temperature. And uh, then there's this company called Dog Day Spice Rubs. They make these uh, rubs that you can put on it. And it just adds that extra little bit of flavor. Oh man. Like uh, if it's a tenderloin or even a backstrap on a, on a pronghorn, 
I now stake the, the or roast almost the back straps on a pronghorn because it's about that big around and about that long. And I put it on the grill and I'm flipping it and rolling it. And as it's getting, the pieces are getting done, I'm cutting it and eating it right there. So not much of it makes it into the house by the time I'm done cooking it. So. What's the bino attachment on your tripod? The bino attachment on my tripod right here. Loophold makes this cool bino uh, adapter for uh, big binos. So you stick them in here and you go, and so it's kind of a universal adapter because some of them have a peg that goes in the middle and hey, you'll lose those over time. There's, there's plenty of uh, complications with having binos on, on a tripod, so this helps. I didn't know so many people would ask questions about my setup here. I should have brought my bow with me. They'd be asking me all kinds of smart bow questions. What range do you zero in your rifle at? 100. So what, what range do I zero in my rifle at? I always 100. 100 yards. That way, no matter where I'm at, it's consistent. I know, and I'm not. I'm just not one of those long bomb kind of guys. I, I'm, my theory is hunting's about getting as close as you can. Uh, and so... Sometimes I'm forced to make a little bit longer shot and I practice those a lot, but really I zero for a hunter and I want to keep those shots close. Got a mosquito biting me on the forehead here. Should we shut her down, boys, or should we do one more? Let's do one more. Better find a good one then. All right, I better find a deer if we're gonna... We want to leave the audience with a deer over here. There were some in that basin over there. But I didn't want to say too much about it because you guys would be distracted and you'd be looking for deer instead of reading the Facebook comments. So, what are you doing, Michael? Oh, Michael's showing. The, there's the rest. There's where we're glassing those big basins over there. One of my friends asked if you ever show if I show you my secret spots. Oh, one of Marcus, the camera guy, his friends say asked, does Marcus ever show me his secret spots? No, Marcus is tight lipped. Marcus could. Marcus could work for the CIA. I mean, it's like, Marcus, that's a really nice bucky shot. Where'd you get that? Oh, well, you know, we're driving down Highway 395 and just decided to stop somewhere. <laughs> that's all right. He'll, he'll probably, he gets to follow me everywhere. He's probably selling my GPS coordinates out on eBay or something. That, that's grounds for getting fired from my crew is if you uh, have loose lips and start telling the world about where we're at so uh, all right that wasn't the last one or was well, it well there's a bunch of questions i was trying to find a good one all right one. what's a really good one scott you got a really good one sorry i know I, I, I mean of your own i meant of your own my dairy queen t-shirt i had left it at home are you hunting wyoming this year am i hunting wyoming this year no oh well yeah i am marcus is gonna know about this spot Marcus and I have elk tags that start September 20th, rifle elk tags in Wyoming. So yeah, we're going to be hunting elk in Wyoming. Uh, we drew that with one point, and if you subscribe to the to the Go Hunt Insider, you would have found that hunt also. But, when are you doing another sweepstakes hunt? When are we doing another sweepstakes hunt? Um, can I? Well, you're taking someone, right? Yeah, we're go, we're go, we're next week. We're going to be down in New Mexico for the last year's sweepstakes we did with uh, Onyx Maps. But I'm going to plead the fifth on the whole sweepstakes idea. Uh, you'll find out soon enough when we're doing another sweepstakes hunt. So, And if I, if I was you, I'd kind of stay tuned into Elk Talk Live to find out more about it. But that it? Yeah. All right, yeah. folks. Thanks for watching. Uh, again, text Randy. R-A-N-D-Y to 313131. Let us know. Give us your comments. Leave a bunch of comments now, and we'll try to, to use them next week uh, as the opening comments. And I uh, hope you'll share this with your friends. Big thanks to Botech, to Leupold, to Onyx, uh, Ripcord, Tight Spot, Black Gold, all those companies make this possible. Uh, thanks to Michael and Marcus and Scott for reading all these questions and giving up an evening of mule deer hunting. See you next week, folks. Thanks for watching. I can't believe that battery lasted that long. And now it's too late to go kill those deer. Because the shooting light ends here when? Uh, sunset was at... 7.48, you said?